Today I'm going to show you how to bone out and marinate a whole chicken. The reason I want to show you how to do this is because there's so many good reasons for doing it yourself rather than just buying thighs or breasts. When you bone out your whole chicken you get both meats and you get all the other little bits and pieces like the chicken wings and you get the carcass and other bits of trim and bits and pieces so you can make your own bone broth chicken stock. First of all we need uh, a whole chicken. Whenever you're buying whole chickens or any kind of sort of protein you want to spend as much as you can afford really. I'm going to use a Bostock chicken, uh, superb organic free range chicken, the best you can buy in New Zealand. Buy the best that you can afford and it will come back um, big time on the plate every time. So let's get into it and bone out this chicken. One of the first things you need to do is pick the right knife. Now not all of you will have boning knives at home but uh, a good boning knife, they don't have to be expensive, this is probably 50, 50 to 80 dollars. Um, it's got a plastic handle, that doesn't matter anything, it's all about the steel. The steel is really good, really sharp and it's got a nice flexible blade, nice and thin to go around those bones and I always like to have just a, just a good general purpose boning knife on hand uh, for doing jobs just like this. It does make a difference. If you've ever tried to bone a chicken out with like a big cook's knife, that's probably why you don't like boning out chickens. The first thing we want to do is make sure that we don't if there's any chicken juices in there, we leave them in the packet and we don't spill them all over our bench. I'm just going to open that up and inside the stomach cavity, if there is any juice, that will be where it is. Going to pick it up and that's pretty dry, it's lovely. So here we have a beautiful chicken facing towards us. This is where we're going to get into it. We're going to make two cuts on the, on the thighs, two little slices there and we're just using the centre of the knife just in here not so much the tip and not so much down there and we just pick up the chicken from underneath like this and this is um, the hardest part for those who haven't done a lot of butchery and are a little bit squeamish but we just need to dislocate these legs so we're just going to put a little bit of pressure in the opposite direction of where the leg would normally want to go we just do that on both sides and that just dislocates the joint we're going to roll this over and here you can see like there's a beautiful little little oyster of chicken and we're just going to come in with the knife and go around that little oyster and then you can see where the little joint is that we dislocated it and it just needs a little slice in there and you're through and then in the back you're just going to slide your knife a couple of slices down you're going to run it down the bone towards the back end of the chicken and there we go that's our first thigh off and then we're just going to pick this up a little bit of skin there just going to make one little slice just to let that free up and again we can see where that little oyster is through the joint and then slide it back down that, that back end of the bone okay so that's our two thighs ready to roll we're going to bring this over here and we're just going to take the wings straight off now you want to come out a bit of an angle so the actual joint of this is a little bit in from where you can see so if you the great thing with butchery is when you're looking for the joint you'll either hit the joint bang on and the knife will go through and you can take the piece off but if you hit the bone don't panic just adjust your aim so I know that this joint is a little bit further in it's actually in here and we're through and now we've got our two wings now we've got our we want to keep the chicken breast or the crown facing towards me like this and there's a lovely little line that runs through and that just like the little breastbone and we want to make an imaginary line down there where that breastbone is and to get through the skin is the hardest part you want to make sure that the knife doesn't slip and go onto your thumb you just want to hold this firmly get through that skin and as soon as you're into the flesh then you can just sweep down we sweep down like that until you hit the wishbone so just down there is the wishbone and the knife will glide down there slide your knife see i'm just doing nice sliding motions towards myself down there the wings already off and that piece just comes straight off so a nice firm grip with my my hand there sweeping down following the bone And there we go. So now we've got our two breast, two thigh, two wings. Okay, so 
Now we've got this carcass here, and um, we're gonna use that for chicken stock. So I can either leave it whole, or I can break it down a little bit, and just give it a little twist. I'm actually just gonna put this into a stock pot for later on. We're gonna just clean up our chicken breasts. There's a little bit of skin that always comes off the front. Just a nice firm cut straight down on the board. Anything that looks like it's just overhanging a little bit. There we go, we've got a lovely, lovely nice chicken breast like that. Any of the scrap can just go into our into our stock pot pile. A little bit there, a little bit there. That's all we need to do. Now we've got our chicken wings. We'll take care of that. What you can do with this is, if you don't want to leave this hole for making um, like fried chicken wings, so what you can do is make a little V cut and take out that little flap of skin. And then just below the joint, just cut around it. And then again, dislocate. And then that just comes off like that. A little cut and you get a little mini drumstick. And then up here, below this joint, make two cuts, one on each side, and then you get to dislocate it again. If you're not sure which way to dislocate a joint, always do it in the opposite direction that the joint wants to go and put our knife just behind those little bones. One slice and we're free. And then you've got two bones in there. It's the little one that we're gonna take out and leave the center one in. The little one just comes straight out. I'm just gonna twist this and bring it back onto itself. A little bit tricky, you need to use a little bit of force, but then we're left with another little wing ding. So we're just gonna repeat that. Again, it's this little bit of skin in the middle we're gonna take out. The skin's not gonna serve any extra purpose, it's just a little bit of extra fat around, around there. Dislocate, cut, slice, slice, like that. Underneath those two bones, that's out. Pick the small of the two. With a firm grip, go against itself, and that's out. And there we have it. So we have this tiny little bit of scrap, which is just fat and bone. That's perfect for our stock pot. And here we have four nice little wing dings, perfect for whatever you want to use. Just gonna move this out of the way a little bit. Right, now, the hardest part about boning a chicken is the thigh. We're just gonna go round and round here, and then we just put it down like this, and just where the bones go, just make an imaginary line. We're just gonna put a little cut there on top of where that bone goes. You need to pick it up by the scruff of the neck, and we're gonna just expose this bone by scraping it on both sides. Be careful of your finger, because your finger's just under there, so now you are using the tip of your knife. Scrape there, scrape there, expose the bone. Grab it there and use the tip to poke through. And this is the advantage of using a boning knife. You poke through like that and then turn this around. And on the inside of the bone, on both bones, you can just kind of use a sawing motion to kind of hack your way through the meat. So this one's been scraped, scraped, get past the knuckle there and on the inside you just sweep down. Now you pick it around and grab it by the scruff of the neck again. And you're just gonna ease off the chicken off this side. And the knuckle, the top side of the knuckle is the hardest piece to take off on the whole chicken because the cartilage is easily cut with your knife. So we're just gonna feel our way. And again, our finger's just on the other side, so don't use a lot of force. Just let the knife do the work. Just nice and gentle, little slice there. I'm just teasing it away. Grab it from below now. So I start at the top, now I'm below. Teasing it away, past the cartilage, and get under there of sweeping it off like that. The bone's reasonably clean, in the stock pot, and you get this gorgeous big fat thigh to work with. Let's do the next one. So again, around and around the racetrack, nice soaring motion, and we're gonna grab this, sweep it down there, sweep it down there, Make an imaginary line back towards here. Couple of little cuts. Come under there, sweep it up. On the inside of the two bones, release it, sweep it. Get past that cartilage. Get past the cartilage, scruff of the neck. Tease it past, flick it through and just let it drop like that. Cool. So here we have it. 
two breasts, two thighs, four wingdings, all from one chicken, plus we've got all these bones, which is perfect to make a stock, like one to two liters of stock, and you can leave that in the freezer for any time later on in the year when you want to make a soup. Right, this here we can just discard for the moment. If you didn't want to use those, save those, put them in your stock. All it's going to do is, is add extra flavor. What we're going to do is just pop this chicken onto a plate. I'll just quickly clean up my board. Okay, so we've got a chicken ready. Board's nice and clean. Um, let's get into making the marinade. So I'm using two herbs today, like I mentioned earlier. I'm going to use uh, oregano and thyme. Both of them are beautiful spring herbs. They grow really prolifically. They've got a nice strong flavor and go great with chicken. But first of all, we just need to pick our oregano. You don't need too much. We're just going to make a quick little marinade. And if I've got any left over, I'll keep it as a herb oil. In fact, the marinade I'm making now is virtually identical as herb oil that we can use once we've cooked the chicken. Okay, so here's our oregano. Now, all I'm gonna do is give this a rough chop. So bunch it up nice and tight in your hand. Just cut it very finely. The finer you cut it now, the less work we have to do when we chop it in a mortar and pestle. Okay, now, now we can go back over top. Okay. I'm just going to put all this into my mortar and pestle. Now we're going to grab my thyme. Now the thyme I've picked um, just quite near the tips, especially when it's young spring growth. The tips are always nice and tender and the stalk is nice and soft as well. So if you've got long stems of thyme, I would still take the very tip because it makes it much easier to crush it down into a paste. Now I'm just going to cut it nice and fine. Same as my oregano. So I've got a handful of oregano there. And just like, oh, not even half a cup, quarter of a cup of fresh thyme. And then she goes in there with the oregano. Just give that a wee tidy. And up we come onto our board. We're gonna add some salt in here. Not too much, just a wee good pinch. And this is just a little bit of Himalayan salt. We could use sea salt and we're gonna just in a circular motion grind this with the salt in a circular pattern so that it doesn't spill out if a little bit comes on the edge just flick it back with your finger and after about 10 15 seconds it's half crushed like that we're on our way we actually want to take it to a paste so you want downward pressure with the pestle, crushing those herbs into the mortar. This is, what, this is why I love mortar and pestles, because you can do a little job like this in about 30 seconds to a minute. Here we go. And I've got a decent pressure down there, which is allowing me to crush it into this paste. And now this is where I add my garlic. I'm gonna put two small cloves, or one big clove, and this is where I actually crush it in a more traditional mortar and pestle movement. That just helps crush the garlic. And now that it's into little pieces, I'm gonna grind this again. Now we don't add the garlic with the herbs at the start because the moisture in the garlic doesn't let the, paste, doesn't let the herbs be crushed to a paste. That's what the salt does. So that's why we add the garlic after we've already made our paste. Now we're just doing a quick circular motion again to crush that garlic down. And kind of when you don't see lumps of garlic, you're ready to go. That's cool. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of olive oil. So I'm just using regular extra virgin olive oil that we use for cooking. Just a little bit. And just enough that when I muddle it, and that's what you call it when you just stir a liquid in, it's gonna trap all those gorgeous flavors and color. If I leave that too long without adding the oil, it's gonna oxidize and we're gonna lose some of that beautiful color. Just add a wee bit more. So I've pretty added a quarter of a cup to half a cup. We're all done there. Okay, now the last thing is we're gonna add a little bit of lemon zest. And we're just gonna use a little microplane because the zest that comes out of here is super fine and you don't need to chop it up again. And the combination of oregano, thyme, garlic, the olive oil, and the lemon just makes for an incredible flavored marinade. 
it's also easy. And it's just something you can't buy in the shops. Here's my teaspoon. Beautiful. Now what I will do is I'll take some of this out. So that's made nearly half a cup. I'll leave just a little bit in there. And yes, it's a marinade, but it's also a basic herb oil. I'll add a tiny bit more there. And I'll just wrap this up, and this will keep easy in the fridge for a couple of days, even two weeks, if you added that to, to barbecued meats and things like that, you're still onto a winner. But I'm just gonna put this aside for now, and this is where we marinate the chicken. Each piece of chicken has its own little secret on how best to put that marinade under the skin. Under here, you open that up and just put your finger, and you can make like a little pocket, and you just get a teaspoon, not too much. You slide that in, and with your finger on the back, take it off the teaspoon and then you can just give it a little bit of a tickle and you've got a beautiful marinade and again don't do it from the bottom because you actually can't do it very easily come in here put your finger make a little pocket I don't know why you can't come from underneath it just works from the top and now the thighs again there's an easy way and a hard way easy way is to come from this longer edge here and you just pick it up and again put your finger in there and you can just give it a bit of a poke and you can make a pocket there's like two little separate pieces of meat there and then we go you can go right to the back like that in there rub it around do it again and from the top it's really close to the joint and you just can't get your finger there so from the longer side underneath quick poke Get that last little bit. And we're in, move that around. And here we go, four pieces of gorgeous marinated chicken. All ready to go. We've got a little bit of extra marinade slash herb oil that we can keep in the fridge for a few days, serve with the chicken when we're ready to cook. Last but not least, because we've done the whole chicken ourselves, we've got a beautiful, base ingredients for the start of our chicken bone broth. And don't forget, we've also got these four little wingdings that we can use, keep for later on, um, accumulate them over, over a period of time. And when you've got a barbecue next time, you can do something special with those as well. So there you go, breaking down and marinating a whole chicken. Pretty easy, uh, just a couple of little pieces to, to take care of. And that's mainly just coming around that joint and um, hope you enjoyed that and happy breaking down your own chickens catch you later